So this weekend for Cinco de Mayo, my daughter asked me to make some birria tacos. I had never made them before. My husband is the one who normally makes them. So I decided I would go ahead and give it a try since he wasn't able to do it. I did a little bit of research and came up with this recipe. Let me know what you think. So I started by preparing my peppers. I have four types of peppers here. I have guajillo, arbo, ancho, and pastilla. I went in and I chopped off the tips of the pepper so that I can remove the seeds. You want to remove the seeds so that your um, sauce is not bitter. But I went through each one and I just went in the inside and the outside and got out as much of the seeds as possible. And here were all the seeds once everything was removed and my peppers. And then I have six pounds of beef chuck roast here. I just cut that down into about two or three inch little pieces so that we can sear them. Once they were cut, I went and I took off any major fat pieces. You do want some fat, but anything that was a little bit extra, I just kind of trimmed that off the edge so we can get ready and fry up the pieces in the pan. Once I had everything cut, I went ahead and sprinkled it with a little bit of salt and pepper and got my pan ready. my high skillet i have a couple of tablespoons of some avocado oil just enough to cut, coat the bottom of the pan and i dropped in my pieces so we can get a nice sear to start building flavor for our sauce once i got both sides brown i went ahead and i transferred them into my stock pot this is going to be the pot that i am going to put everything in and cook the media Then I just went in after that was done and I cooked the rest of the meat. You want to make sure that you get a nice sear on your meat because that is going to definitely help with the depth and flavor. But you can see how nice and crusty, look at that, that um, meat looks. I mean, this batch of meat understood the assignment. Crust up, get nice and flavorful. And then once that was all done, I took my peppers and I just flash fried them in the grease just about maybe 30 to 60 seconds. Um, just to help start get getting that flavor to render and then I took them out and set them to the side I did chop up two large onions that I'm going to add to the pan after I took my peppers out I put a couple of more tablespoons of that oil and then I dropped my onions in Once my onions started to become a bit translucent, I added three Roma tomatoes that I just kind of rough chopped. They don't have to be cut in any special form, just enough to get it open and then, you know, get the juices flowing. To that, I added my peppers because we want to fully hydrate them and start to excrete some flavor from the peppers. Now, the cooked tomatoes and the onions are going to create their own liquid, but I did add about four cups of water to my pan. Um, to help get my peppers coated as well as two packs of this beef bouillon. After that, I let everything sink together and just kind of simmer for about five minutes and then I turned the fire off and let it sit for an additional five. After that, I went ahead and I put all of the vegetables that were in the stock into my blender. I added about a cup of the liquid to get the blender going. And then towards the end, I added the remainder of the liquid until everything was nice and combined. And then I had to season my um, mixture, so I added one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. 
I added another full tablespoon of some ground cumin, about two teaspoons of ginger. I also went in with um, a tablespoon of some dried thyme, as well as a quarter teaspoon of allspice, one tablespoon of crushed black pepper, and one quarter cup of white vinegar. I've also added one full head of roasted garlic. Once I had that all together, I went ahead and I gave it a nice blend. And then I went to strain the mixture. So you want to strain it and get rid of any, like any of the pepper skin or anything that's not going to be nice and smooth so it doesn't interfere with our sauce. So I just did a couple of batches and used my um, rubber spatula to kind of help it get through the strainer. And then for the extra liquid, well, extra ingredients that were in my blender i poured about three cups of water in there um, and then i just used that to help get rid of the extra um, ingredients that i had stuck in my pan i'm sorry stuck in my blender and also to help um, liquefy our mixture okay after that i went ahead and i poured it over the meat wanted to make sure that the meat was nice and coated. Now, if this happens where your sauce does not cover your meat, add some beef broth um, to cover it just to make sure that the meat is covered. But I had a good amount, so I was satisfied with where I was. Um, so I went ahead and just made sure everything was nice and submerged into my sauce. To that, I did add one um, cinnamon stick as well as a few bay leaves. You want to go ahead and cover this up and we're going to let this cook for about an hour and then I like to come back and taste it and check um, the seasoning. Now y'all know I was not going to cook meat without celery. <laughs> so I did cut up two stalks of celery. I, made, I left them pretty big so that I could remove them once everything was done. But yes, I did add my celery. And then after about an hour, you'll see that the um, meat the liquid from the meat does the liquid that is released from the meat is going to help also thin out the sauce so i do check it and then and i'm able to check my seasoning to see if it needs more salt or if it needs anything else i like to do this a little later because as the meat and the sauce mix together it is going to start creating a different flavor so i like to build flavor as i go um, I did add about two cups of water. Now, you didn't see that on this um, camera, but I did add two cups. I went in with another packet of beef broth, some garlic powder, as well as some Tony Satchery. So after about two and a half, three hours, you'll see that the meat has and sauce has reduced. It's pretty much done. I went in and I skimmed off the fat. This is what you use to fry the shells in. You can kind of see the difference between the, I guess you want to call it gravy and the oil um, in the pan. Um, but this is pretty much how it looks once it's separated from the pot. You can see it has a really nice rich color and you can see the little oil in there. But look how tender that meat got. I mean, I barely had to pinch it and it was just falling apart. Once I had all of my um, meat prepared, I took out my cinnamon stick and bay leaves and then I took all of the meat out of our mixture so I could create the consomme. Um, to that pan, I added two more cups of water. As you can see, it is nice and thinned out. You see that? Nice and rich. There is our oil that we pulled. You can see the difference in the color and the texture. That's a little bit more thicker than our consomme. And then there is our meat. I went ahead and I drained any extra liquid that was submerged in the bowl with the meat and I poured it back into our pot for the consomme. Next, it was time to shred the beef. So you just take two forks and you just use it to shred the meat. I'm telling you, this meat 
it was so tender and of course i did taste it when i tell you that combination of peppers the beef broth the i'm telling you it just had such a smoky rich seasoned beefy i can't even I'm, uh, i really can't even describe how flavorful this meat was you just have to try it it was absolutely delicious so once I had my meat shredded, I went ahead and I set up my station. I had my consomme, my oil, and my meat. And then I went and I shredded my cheese. So I used some Monterey Jack, Pepper Jack, and some mozzarella. You wanna use freshly shredded cheese for this because it does help with the melting because bag shredded cheese has that potato starch on the outside. So once I had all of my meat, I'm sorry, all of my cheese shredded, I went and I just mixed it all together so that when I go and make my tacos, um, it is nice and you have a nice blend of cheese. Now this cilantro that I got from the store was absolutely filthy when I bought it. I never seen roots on cilantro, but I gave them a good cleaning and um, rinsed them off really good and then I chopped them up and then I started my taco. So I heated up my skillet. I dipped them in that grease that we had and you're gonna cook each side before you add your meat and cheese. So once I flipped them to the other side, I added my cheese and then my meat. And then we also put onion and cilantro inside of our tacos. That's how my husband's done it and that's the way I'm gonna do it too. So you'll see me um, putting the cilantro and onion and then I will continue cooking them up until they're done. And then I just plated that batch of tacos, but there is a close up on those tacos. Look how good they look, so flavorful. Y'all, these tacos were just delicious. I mean, like I said, this was my first time. It was a lot of work, but it was well worth it. And then I wanted to show a variation. I love tortas, so I wanted to have tacos and tortas. So after I finished my tacos, I went on ahead and I made a torta. I toasted my bread and then I put some refried beans on the bottom. I wanted to do a cheese crust. So once I put my beans on my bun, I sat it on top of my cheese. Y'all, this cheese crust, when I flip this over, this is the prettiest thing I've seen all day. Literally, look at this. Look at that cheese, come on, come on. Flip that bun. Oh, I forgot about the sauce. Yeah, you do have to drizzle the sauce on the back, a little bit of that consomme oil, but look at that cheese crust. Ooh, with the meat on top of that. Ooh, ooh. Yes, this sandwich was probably better than the tacos. It was so good. And then, because I am greedy, yes, I did put some more fresh cheese on top. How can you not? You have to have the combination. You got to have the cheese crust, and then you got to have the soft cheese pull. I did put some onions and cilantro, and did the same thing with the top. And then I'll show you everything plated up. And here is my video charcuterie board. I have my torta, sliced up some avocados and some lime, our tacos, and then our consomme. Look how rich it looks. I added some onions and some cilantro. And I wanted to show you the inside of that torta. But look at that. I cut it in half, but you can see all of that nice seasoned beef. The cheese is nice and melted. You can see a little bit of that sauce on the bun. And also, I wanted to show you my taco. Who doesn't love a good cheese pool? Yes. And then I wanted to show you um, the consomme um, texture so you can just kind of get an idea of the thickness of it. But 
Look how rich and decadent that looks. It's so seasoned, guys. This this beer was definitely a lot of work. I think Mexican food is probably my favorite type of food ever. Um, but yes, try this recipe out if you have a weekend and you just want something rich and flavorful. Let me know what you think. Thank you.